Samsung released a brand new SSD recently and this is the 990 EVO Plus. It is available in 1TB, 2TB and 4TB variants and ours here is the 2TB version. It is actually rather affordable as it starts from 110 US dollars for the 1TB version and goes up to 345 US dollars for the 4TB variant. With such high capacity with supremely high advertised speed on the box, there surely is a catch, right? So let's explore this SSD in today's video. So do like and subscribe as we usually don't do SSD reviews like this. But there are a lot of smartphone users now who are getting SSDs for their phones for video recording and whatnot. So let's talk about the unboxing first. As far as I know, the packaging is very similar to what we had on the 990 EVO. But we didn't get to review that, so I can't compare them. Anyway, the packaging here is simple and the documentations are hidden behind this pouch that I am going to ignore entirely since it doesn't actually provide me with anything useful. Looking at the SSD itself, the first thing that caught my attention is the use of just a single NAND chip for 2TB worth of storage. This is Samsung's die with the model number as shown on the screen here and it is Samsung's 236-layer V3 TLC NAND flash. TLC is going to be better than QLC, which should last longer and also perform better than QLC NAND flash that we are seeing on even more affordable SSDs in the market today. As for the controller, the Samsung 990 EVO Plus is equipped with Samsung's very own Piccolo series of controller, and this controller works in two different protocols. It works in either PCIe Gen 4 X4 mode or PCIe Gen 5 X2 mode. This is an interesting hybrid approach as it doesn't need the full bandwidth of PCIe Gen 5 X4, so it only uses two out of the four lanes available. We'll talk about this in the comparison later as well because we did a total of two different tests for the two different protocols. We then installed the SSD to our test bench PC and then installed the Samsung Magician software to check if there's any firmware updates or not and then proceeded with the test. Starting with PCIe Gen 4 X4 mode, this SSD can't really reach the theoretical maximum advertised on the box. It's mostly around 6550 megabytes per second and 5770 megabytes per second in both linear read and write respectively. Still, I can understand why, since this 2TB variant only has a single NAND chip. Having double 1TB NAND chip would actually be faster here because it will work like having two lanes on a highway instead of just one. So files will transfer faster if we have double 1TB NAND flash. In either 64's linear write speed, this test will saturate the cache. Since the SSD is DRAMless, we can see that once the cache is filled up, the write speed tanks to somewhere around 1750 megabytes per second write and never recovered throughout the entire test. This is expected since once again it is DRAMless, but the speed is much better than many other SSDs in the market even after the cache has been saturated. Now this is the speed that we are going to get on PCIe Gen 4 X4. What if we have an even newer and better PC that can run on PCIe Gen 5? Luckily, the motherboard that we are using actually has support for PCIe Gen 5. So we redid all of the tests and here are the results. There is definitely a noticeable increase in read speed, but the write speed remains very similar with and within margin of error. So if you have PCIe Gen 5 on your motherboard, then you can use it to get even higher read speed. But then again, even in PCIe Gen 4 X4 mode, it is already plenty fast. Okay, let's now talk about the temperature. We've actually tested the Samsung 990 EVO Plus without any heat sinks at first in Gen 4 X4 mode. And um, yeah, it hits this temperature. It definitely needs some sort of cooling, so we just slap on the motherboard's included heat sink, and that can actually tame the temperature, so no problems there. I'm not sure if the sticker on the SSD actually helps to dissipate heat because it has this kind of texture underneath which I believe is some sort of adhesive thermal pad. Not really sure how effective it is since it is so thin and it does not have any copper plates. So should you buy this SSD or not? The Samsung 990 EVO Plus from our test shows that it is great in terms of performance for a DRAMless SSD. 
The read speed is great in PCIe Gen 4 X4 mode, but even greater if we use it in Gen 5 X2 mode. As for who is this SSD really for, I can think of uh, well using it as a game drive for your Steam library or something like that. Game drives usually don't require a lot of writes except for when the game is installing or there are any game updates or whatnot. And most of the time, you're going to just read from the SSD and this Samsung 990 EVO Plus, like what we've shown, the read speeds are great. Maybe you can even use it in an external SSD too. That would be great. You can buy an external SSD enclosure like this one and then just put the Samsung 990 EVO Plus inside and then you will get an external SSD with very fast speeds. And since the enclosure is made out of metal, it can help to cool down the SSD as well. And that is all that we have to share with you in today's video about the Samsung 990 EVO Plus SSD. Do let me know what do you think about this SSD and will you buy it or not. Leave your comments down in the comment section below and we'll see you guys in the next video.